Loud East. Loud East. Loud East. Loud East Wrestling fans. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert Superblood. Was a, a great way for Loud East Wrestling to return not only to the Mecca in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey, but it was my first uh, show since uh, Wild East back in June because I missed um, what actually was uh, the free show they did in the Bronx during a street fair, but that was actually Greatest Wrestling Alliance, which is supposed to be the, a breeding ground fed to Loud East Wrestling, unless I'm mistaken. But... <sighs> Thanks to circumstances beyond my control, I actually arrived, and the three-way hardcore pre-show match was under what was already underway, and I don't know who did it, but there was so much it looked like breakfast cereal laying on the floor, and I noticed Loud East Wrestling owner the Grim Reefer was took a push broom and he was sweeping it out of the way, but the end result of that. Uh, Triple Threat Hardcore match on the pre-show saw Killer Kyle defeat Bryant Starr and the Irish Virus. Um, I don't know if there were any other, how many other pre-show matches they had, but um, I was just guess getting settled in. It was already that Hardcore match in the pre-show was already in progress. But we get out of the main show, and we have ringside Sean, who has ring announced for Outlaw Wrestling in the past. He ring announced the show. And uh, we start out with tag team match, as we saw, representing The Wave, Johnny Rambo and Mad John, accompanied the ring by KB King, all apologies if I got his name wrong, and the perfect ratio, Adonis Stone, as Mad John and Johnny Rambo did battle with no longer risen nasty, Nino Cruz and Chris Barton, now known as RTS, which I understand stands for Revise the Scene. Pretty good uh, tag match these, these teams had, not clicking nicely in the ring. Uh, early in the bout, Mad John hit, um, he, he hit Nino Cruz, yeah, he, he used uh, on Nino Cruz, he used the Dino Bravo move. I wasn't a fan of the late Dino Bravo, but if you're old enough to remember him, you know which particular move that was. <clears throat> uh, eventually, yeah, RTS defeated Mad John and Johnny Rambo, as Rambo was the one that got pinned. But then all of a sudden, out, out of nowhere, Chris Cage hits uh, Johnny Rambo from behind with some kind of an object. Uh, KB King and Adonis Stone come out, and Cage... Took the microphone, he said that Adonis Stone is El Loud East's golden boy. He's getting everything by knowing the meeting the right people. And I forgot what else he said. Mm. But uh, I was wondering what was going to happen with him. If he was going to be in a match or not. But apparently it didn't happen. All he did was attack uh, Johnny Rambo. Then up next, next we have, oh by the way, uh. RTS defeated Mad John and Johnny Rambo at 11 minutes, 45 seconds. Um, next match, we see Smiley do battle with Himmy Hendrix. <clears throat> I forgot how this one ended. But Himmy Hendrix defeated Smiley at 12 minutes, 36 seconds. Now, <laughs> after the uh, match... Adonis Stone's son is in the ring. And I forgot what Hendrix said to him, but Adonis a Stone's son kicks Hendrix in the balls. And at the urgence of Smiley, Smiley told him something, and the son of son of Stone did a backflip on to Hendrix and got on top of him and a free count was made. But uh, that's not the record books. Hendrix got the victory over Smiley at 12 minutes, 36 seconds. Our next matchup, we see the revolver, Alex Ryman, take on Mr. James. Pretty good matchup these two guys had. Uh, this was Ryman's uh, 
Loud East Wrestling debut. I forgot exactly how it ended, but Mr. James defeated uh, the revolver Alex Ryman at 8 minutes 22 seconds. Then we had the Grim City Invitational Scramble, where the winner would be crowned the first ever Loud East Wrestling Lionheart Champion. Okay, among the participants, we had the God Destroyer, or the Destroyer God, Ghost Shadow, versus Shane Rose, versus King Jeter, versus Black Zemus, versus John the Animal, versus Perfect Ratio, Adonis Stone, versus Tommy Invincible. Tommy Invincible looks like he's been getting booked so many companies, it seems. This was a seven-way matchup, which saw Adonis Stone defeat Ghost Shadow, Shane Rose, King Jeter, Black Zemus, John the Animal, and Tommy Invincible to become the first ever Loud East Wrestling Lionheart champion. After the uh, match ended, Stone, actually uh, Johnny Rambo comes out and congratulates Stone on winning the belt. Stone stands up on the second rope and... Rambo hit Stone in the balls. But then out came Mad John and KB King. Again, all apologies if I got his name wrong. And they were like looking looking at it like, why you did that for? And yeah, I forgot what else he ended up saying. Uh Don Stone won that seven way match at nine minutes fifty nine seconds. Up next, uh a battle of of veterans of indie wrestling, but uh, this but this part was it was not announced that it was going to be a first blood match, as Jay Lover did battle with Julius Smokes. Yeah, these guys really did did what they really did good in this one. Uh, Julius Smokes defeats Jay Lover at eleven minutes fifty two seconds. Hmm. And at that point, the show had gone to intermission. Then, after intermission comes to an end, we see a, a singles matchup as making his uh, Loud East Wrestling debut, Bam Sullivan. He took on Gabriel Sky. And boy, these guys were something. This uh, match was hot and heavy. Uh, doors were, were got involved. Eventually, uh, they go up on the stage right up, right above the where the commentators were at. I've got to mention during the the Jay Lover Julia Smokes matchup, Lover had jumped off the um, the stage and he Smokes was laying on the commentators table and the, the table didn't break, but you know he tried to crash crash him through it. But uh, Gabriel Sky and Bam, oh, these guys kept going into the crowd. Uh, at one point, they're up on the stage. Gabriel did like a flip, and I'm glad I not only moved, but held on to my chair. <sniffs> Gabriel Sky defeats, eventually defeats Bam Sullivan at 18 minutes, 32 seconds. Gabriel Sky was, a, was originally announced to face Johnny Cashmere, but I guess he didn't make the show. Up next was a women's match. Not sure if this is the first ever women's match in Loud East Wrestling history, as we saw the courageous Christina Marie do battle with Ali Ketch. Um, these ladies really brought it to each other. Ali Ketch defeated the courageous Christina Marie at 10 minutes 34 seconds. Up next, tag team action, as we see... Young Gordy, J. Alfredo, and the sensational one, Colin Parker, as they did battle with J.P. and Tommy Grayson, the back seats. And ring announcer Sean, ringside Sean, he says that the, the, the match is going to be for the JCW Juggalo Champion Shit Wrestling Tag Team Champion. Tag Team titles will be on the line in this matchup, which the back seats go into the match have. Uh, I forgot who's JP and who's Tommy, but the ending came 
when one of them took one of the tag belts and hit Kyle Parker with it, causing a disqualification. The prospects defeat the back seats at 9 minutes, 21 seconds on a disqualification. Back seats still the JCW Tag Team Champions. And then it was main event time as we saw the timeless Crowbar do battle with the bad boy Joey Janela. Well, wild and crazy match these guys had where ended with Janela doing a top rope stomp on the Crowbar. Uh, Joey Janela defeated Crowbar at 20 minutes, 35 seconds. And after the match, Janela talked about Crowbar being a 30-plus year veteran in wrestling and that he got his degree and he's a... I forgot, he's a physical therapist, is it? Because Janela had said he talked about he got a knee injury at one time and he was going to be out for a year. But thanks to but thanks to Crowbar, Janela was back in five months. And... Um, yeah, definitely a great way to cap off the night, even though, like I said, thanks to, uh, mm, you know, I didn't, I missed probably at least one pre didn't catch the entire pre-show. Uh, well, I can tell you why that happened, folks. NJ Trans, the 168 NJ Transit bus wasn't prompt with their skill. They were supposed to have a, a bus at 515 at the Fort Authority. didn't show up for show for another half hour and it was like six was it six thirty or later I, I actually made it to Dante's Pizza on Main Street and it was like after seven o'clock I finally you know made made it to the building and good thing I had paid or already paid online <sighs> what a rush <sighs> I paid online um but uh, it's great seeing uh, ringside Sean, who we took a picture before the main show started. Uh, seeing Stella, who was working the door. Uh, Richard Ruiz. I mean, Richard, you couldn't have noticed me because I didn't. Like I said, I didn't arrive until that triple threat hardcore pre-show match. So that's why you didn't notice me before the show even before the pre-show even started and reefer eventually grim reefer eventually noticed me as well um let me see here well they were like two good looking ladies a, a blonde and a brunette in the crowd sitting in the front row uh there was some not in my section there were some other good-looking ladies sitting behind me. I, I noticed after the show was over, they were helping, trying to help clean up, clean up, clean up after the mat, uh, the, the show had ended. One thing I do want to address, um, sorry. There was this one young child wearing a J. Alfredo t-shirt and he kept like, you know, like, I don't know, trying to emulate the, the action going on. And I don't know which one of those ladies is his mother. He kept tell, she kept telling him to, to, to get back over where, to where she's standing. And, you know, the, I don't know, on, on numerous occasions, the kid, the kid didn't listen. I will say, I mean, I will say this. I mean, he wasn't, I mean, it was right near where I was sitting. And maybe it's a good thing I didn't bring my megaphone out of the bag because he probably would never want to put it down. But I am not a parent, all right? I don't have children. And I am not Super Nanny Joe Frost. But what I don't understand, and this doesn't just apply with this child I'm referring to, but, you know, I've seen it out in this... I mean, well, but in this in this case, I mean, why didn't the, 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 the child... Why, instead of telling this... Constantly telling this child from a distance to, to to come back to come back to come back over to where she is or tell him to stop acting up I mean why couldn't why couldn't the mother just walk over there and grab him I, I don't know if it was a him or a her but he again the child was wearing a J. Alfredo shirt and he had long curly hair possibly a member of Jay Alfredo's family I'm not too sure but you know like 
I mean, if it was, if I had a child, like, if I had a child and they're acting like that and, and they don't want to listen to me the first time after I tell them to tell them to, to come back over, I would walk over there and use physic and grab them. That's what I'm basically telling you is, you know, I mean, uh, sorry, folks. That's basically why, I, um, you know, that's what I, that's what I would have done if it was my, if I had a child that wasn't listening, I would walk over to them and grab them. Okay. Well, well, no return date was announced, but I'm guessing Loudy's Wrestling won't be back. Probably. <laughs> I'm guessing they won't be back until the new year. Um, of course, the, uh, matches, the, these three, let's see, it was, let me see, hold on, it was, well, okay, these matches weren't even announced, the, uh, the, the Grim City International Scramble, they didn't announce the participants for that match, Mr. James' Alex Ryman was not announced for the show, Smiley was, an, was announced, but they didn't mention his opponent ahead of time, so I don't know how the planning into this went, and went into it. I do hope Loud East Wrestling hope they can hope we can do more shows in in the new year. I mean, you'll have shows, but you know, instead of going months without a show, I mean, I know it's tough to run a show and put one together and all that other jazz. Uh, damn, what else we've got? Uh, I mean, you know, if they don't have a heavyweight champion yet or tag team champions, I will say, hopefully, in, for future Loudy shows, you could try to have 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 a woman's match at every show from this point on. And congratulations to everybody who got to uh, compete for this promotion for the very first time. Uh. Dang it. Um, okay, I guess that'll do it. Great to see Loud East Wrestling again. And I guess they won't be back until 2025 at this rate because they don't run every month. But um, hopefully bigger and better things are on the, on the way.